Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Bible Illustrated Hands. Uh, today's episode was supposed to be an answer to the question, how do we know if we have a guardian angel? But this question that I have received really gave me a laugh and uh, also some ideas how to respond. So I thought it would be better if I responded immediately while, while the ideas are still fresh. Here we go. Uh, when I like watching your videos and I'm an Orthodox Christian, that's, uh, that's part of a Serbian parish, I wanted to ask you a question uh, and for you to answer in your video. I'm Orthodox, but there are some Roman Catholic saints that I like by their stories and what they did and preached. I bought an icon plaque of Mother Teresa from uh, Holy Land Market, along with some stuff uh, for my icon corner. My parish priest asked me about Mother Teresa, uh, who she is and where she's from, and they said, She's Catholic, but she came from the East, and what I meant by East, I meant modern Jerusalem. And my parish priest blessed the icons I bought, and unfortunately, uh, uh, along with my Mother Teresa icon too. <laughs> okay, uh, from there, <laughs> I was thinking if he misunderstood what I said, and if I caused him to bless an icon of a saint who's not canonized in the church, and what else uh, uh, that may have caused like an explosion or something. <laughs> it's a nice thing he blessed it anyway, but I don't know what to do uh, with it from that point on. <laughs> should I tell my priest about Mother Teresa more specifically? <laughs> it's already blessed, but still, what should I do? <laughs> I don't know why I find this so funny. <laughs> I will tell you. <laughs> okay, first... <laughs> I don't know if you use like a washing machine yourself personally, <laughs> but if you do, I can tell that a whole lot of things go into that washing machine that shouldn't go like mixed fabrics, keys, coins, <laughs> bills. <laughs> like, how do you accidentally give an icon of a Catholic saint <laughs> to an Orthodox? I mean, did you go through with it? <laughs> or did you just bring a bag? <laughs> or did you just bring bring a bag of souvenirs and he like blessed it wholesale. <laughs> that's one. <laughs> so I, <laughs> I would really like to know <laughs> what rock is this priest living under if he doesn't know <laughs> who Mother Teresa is. <laughs> because indeed that must be a very huge rock. I mean, I think that Mother Teresa, <laughs> that Mother Teresa is like, um, an epitome of a modern Catholic saint, like she's everywhere. Does, does this <laughs> uh, does this priest have a TV? Have a computer? Have any modern media? Did he ever see a Catholic? Uh, does he know what Catholic means in like everyday usage? I mean, I know there are people who will say, "Well, the official name of the Orthodox Church is Old Orthodox Catholic Church," but still, you know, if it's a Serbian parish, and assuming you have used Serbian, there is an apparent difference when you say Catholic as in Roman Catholic, which would be Catholic, or Catholic as in uh, the one holy Catholic and Apostolic Church, which would be Sabornat Cerkva. <laughs> and finally, <laughs> I love when you said uh, <laughs> she's Catholic, but she came from the East, and what I meant by East, I meant modern Jerusalem, which is apparently Albania <laughs> or Kosovo. <laughs> Okay, so to answer <laughs> your question, <laughs> okay, uh, technically icons are, uh, don't really need to be blessed because they're already holy because of the people who are depicted on them. However, at least in the Serbian usage, very often they are blessed and it is expected for them to be blessed and very often even in confession manuals you will see uh, uh, a reminder for people to confess a sin of having an unblessed icon in their home, which might, you know, have uh, some justification that uh, like all holy objects in Serbia, they might be used or have been used in like sorcery or witchcraft. So that might be a bit of a, you know, uh, a bit... Um, of a safeguard, but I think it is simply an influence of St. Peter Mogila. 
uh, that, that's one thing. Uh, second thing, uh, we can keep icons of uncanonized people in our icon corners, uh, provided that they were orthodox. Uh, I myself have commissioned, I have it, and I do pray to Chiyune Sugihara, uh, who was an orthodox Japanese uh, diplomat who uh, practically uh, single-handedly saved up to 10,000 uh, Jews during the Holocaust by issuing um, uh, issuing visas uh, to them in Lithuania, I believe. <laughs> Sorry, I mean. <laughs> uh, however, uh, like you, I also admire some Catholic saints, uh, primarily Jean Vianney, uh, the parish priest of ours, and uh, his, uh, there is this huge book on him that I love reading cover to cover every so often. And they also like uh, Anthony Mary Claret because these two people are, you know, they're really busybodies, you know. They, they practically didn't waste a single moment of their time. So I do understand your fascination with a certain Catholic saint, in this case, Mother Teresa. Um, however, uh, I don't think I own any Catholic imagery myself. Uh, I did get a little... Uh, figurine of Padre Pio, but I do not keep it in my icon corner because, again, these people aren't canonized in the Orthodox Church and they weren't, uh, they weren't Orthodox. Uh, I did have a previous vid video uh, on the possibility of Catholic saints uh, being eventually canonized in the Orthodox Church and that video went beautifully, like, just look at that ratio. Um, so, uh, I wouldn't really go into whether this icon is holy or isn't holy. You know, there was clearly a huge misunderstanding between you and the priest and <laughs> uh, your inability con to convey proper information with his complete lack of being informed on the modern, like, uh, common knowledge. <laughs> <laughs> made uh, made uh, for uh, uh, made for this kerfuffle, <laughs> you know. So you know, just keep that plague, keep it out of your icon corner, keep it somewhere, you know, in your home. It's no big deal. I know, um, I know a big German missionary, an Orthodox missionary, who actually got converted to Christianity uh, by Mother Teresa and. Uh, his encounter with her was the first time in his whole life at the time that he had some positive opinion of a Christian and on Christianity because he was severely abused by the Roman Catholic cl clergy when he was little and uh, he became a Buddhist and uh, in his travels he actually met Mother Teresa and that is the first time he actually um, he actually, uh, his opinion of Christianity started to improve. And, you know, as St. John Chrysostom says, uh, uh, if uh, all of us uh, were proper Christians, there wouldn't be a single pagan left. So that is the case of that. Um, there's nothing too scandalous here, you know. I don't think that um, Mother Teresa is from East. Uh, she did work in East. Again, I don't know where you're from. Maybe you're in the U.S., so technically she's from East. I don't think she is particularly associated with Jerusalem. I haven't read that much about her, but yeah, that's about it. <laughs> Sorry about this episode, I don't <laughs> have to comment. Bye. <laughs>